April storm over himmel grå, snø i dalar på fjell og flå, brauter høge på ukjent veg, krokutten menn som på bører dreg hit til Elvenes. Mai måned med minnekrans, saknar vårfylte himmelglans, er noe underlegg kall og sur, enda en fangeflokk, trøyt og stur, kjem til Elvenes. Gjeng fra morgon til seine kveld, gjeng til kyrkjenes, gjeng til elv, gjeng i grefter og gjeng på veg, maten slik at den kvir seg her på Elvenes. This is the story about a man and the music he composed under extreme circumstances. In April 1940, Nazi Germany invaded Norway. With the help of the collaboration regime under Wittgen Quisling, the German occupants attempted to control every aspect of professional, public and daily life. In February 1942, all Norwegian teachers were forced to join a new organization to make them support the National Socialist ideology. But many teachers refused to collaborate. To demonstrate its power and to generate fear, the Norwegian regime arrested more than 1,000 teachers and incarcerated them in prisons and labor camps across the country. The composer and teacher Gunnar Kjeldas was sent up to the remote and cold north of Norway. There he began to compose a collection of songs called the Fangesunger fra Hirkenes, songs that helped him and his fellow inmates to survive this hostile environment. To keep them safe from the guards, Gunnar's Fangesunger are smuggled out of the camp and into the hands of his son Arnljot back home near Oslo and kept ever since in the Tjeldas family. They might have never again been heard by a larger audience, unless by coincidence this unique document of music composed in a Norwegian prison camp was rediscovered in 2017. The journey begins in Münster at the Department of Musicology. Since 2016, the research project Nordic Music Politics examines the function of music as a form of resistance during the German occupation of Norway in the Second World War. Project leader Michael Kustodis has been conducting research on the topic of music and politics for many years. He explains why it was so extraordinary to find a document about musical resistance in Norway. While examining the Norwegian civil and military resistance movement, I discovered a list in the archives of the Resistance Museum in Oslo. It actually should not exist, and this is an important point to keep in mind, because this list shows more than 100 names of musicians and dozens of theatre artists who supported the resistance movement in Norway. Those were the trustworthy people. To make it more clear, we are speaking of their real names and addresses, not their code names. This list would have been extremely dangerous if it had gotten into the wrong hands. I tried to match them in historic newspapers and public archives. And I was able to identify, for example, the church organ player and composer Arnold Schellers in Hönefoss. Then I contacted the present cantor in Hönefoss, Stein Södal, who not only was familiar with Arnold Schellers music, but even better for us, he was also in touch with the daughter, Anna Ma. Anna Maikeldas takes care of the family heritage. She knows the story of her grandfather's arrest in detail. Farfar blev tatt fange sammen med lærerne, men jeg kjente jo ikke historien bak det med lærerne da jeg var liten. Så det var jo det at farfar blev ført bort og satt i fangenskap, og han fortalte jo det at det blir stua sammen i, i jernbanevogner som heter krøttervogner, der de frakta kveg eller varer, og der stod de da tett i tett i tett med, med mennesker, og det synes jo vi var veldig skummelt. Og at de um, hadde nesten ikke noe å spise, de, og de kom jo ikke ut på en god stund, og de, det tog jo lang tid oppover i, uh, før de kom til Trondheim. Og der 
blev de kört över en båt. Och då var de säkra på att de skulle bli sända till Tyskland. Men de svängde ju några över och till Kirkenes. Until today, the family keeps Gunnar's personal belongings from his time in the prison camp. The engravings on the tin bowl show the places of Gunnar Keldas's exhausting odyssey as a prisoner. Within a few weeks, he and his fellow teacher inmates were deported from Oslo in the south to Hirkenes in the far north, beyond the polar circle. Forced to work long shifts every day, uncertain of their future, the teachers began to write poems, draw sketches, sing songs and produce handcraft to preserve their memories and distract themselves from the brutal and cold reality. Especially the act of singing was crucial to create a common spirit among the prisoners and keep up hope for an early return home. Musik var väldigt viktig i hela hans liv, så jag vill inte tro att det var något mindre viktig i en fängelsesituation och en en kan si, med då hemlängsel och osäkerhet så vill ju bestandig musik vara en tröst. His comrades knew that Gunnar was an accomplished artist and member of the Norwegian Composer Society since 1937. They asked him to write music they could sing together. First, he arranged patriotic melodies that could be performed even under such extreme conditions, after long days of hard work and with sore throats. But then Gunnar asked his comrades to write poems which would describe their shared hopes, fears, experiences and dreams. These different impressions finally became the Fangesonger fra Hirkenes. The Norwegian part of the research project is led by Arnulf Mattes from the Greek Research Center in Bergen. He investigated the unknown biography and musical education of the composer Gunnar Teldas. After Anna Ma had told us all these impressive memories, it was clear for us that we needed to learn more about the music uh, Gunnar Schellos had composed in the camp for a better understanding of Gunnar Schellos' stylistic preferences it helps to look back at his musical education when he was a young teacher in his early 30s he decided to follow his dream and study composition and organ in Leipzig and one has to call into mind that from Greek times and until the 1940s it was very common for Norwegian musicians to leave Norway for Germany in order to achieve a proper education. The edition we are speaking of, the Fangesonger Fra Schirkenes, contains seven songs. O lebe der Elska, To Live is to Love, Bön, which is a hymn, Elvenes, this is the name of the camp right outside of Schirkenes, Heimlengt, Homesickness, Till Dai, For You, September Quell, September Evening, and Barnes Meal, the smile of a child. Now the topic began to grow and we needed more experience to understand the songs. And therefore we asked two professional Norwegian artists, Christiana Isne and Stefan Veselka, who actually live in Münster, to interpret some of these recently recovered pieces for us. <laughs> Things. 
To get another opinion from a Norwegian, familiar with the tradition of Norwegian church music, we asked the organist Stein Sødal for help. When we visited him in Hønefoss, he spontaneously recognized the similarity of Cello's Bön uh, with a traditional song from the very popular collection Norges Melodier, Norway's Melodies. And this musical association might very well be plausible when looking close into the text of the piece Herr Sinkler drew over Salten Hall, Mr. Sinkler left over Salty Sea. This traditional Sinkler tune portrays the historical fight against invaders who were raiding and disgracing the population on their way through Norway. And quite a striking coincidence with Cello's own experience in 1942. Such a political interpretation of Bön mirrors the situation in Camp Elvenes. Accordingly, the song had to have a simple and emotional impact. Being an experienced church musician, Teldas knew as well how to arrange musical prayers. After eight months, Gunnar Teldas was lucky to return home. His music, its spirit of hope and compassion lives on, as long as it is remembered. The Marienschule in Münster got inspired by the exceptional history of Gunnar Teldas and created a project dealing with the consequences of National Socialism today. Together with their teenage students, a team of music and history teachers presented this performance in June 2019 in the presence of Anama at the St. Petri Church in Münster. Looking back, the teachers share their individual experiences. Ich glaube, was die Schülerinnen gerade an, an diesem persönlichen Beispiel sehr spannend fanden, dass da ein Mann war, der in Deutschland eben studiert hat, der auch in Deutschland eben hier Freundschaften hatte, der plötzlich aber mit Deutschland ganz anders in Verbindung gekommen ist, ganz anders in, in, eben hier in, in Konflikt geraten ist. Und diesen Widerstand, den der geleistet hat und auch durchgezogen hat, also gesagt hat, ich mache das nicht, ich trete nicht in diese Vereinigung der Lehrer ein und dafür ja eben auch in das Lager gekommen ist. Ich glaube, das war für sie auch etwas, wo man merkte, das beschäftigt sie auch bei den Haltungen, die sie heute bei Problemen hat. Ähm, gerade im Hinblick auf rechte Tendenzen, wie gehe ich damit eigentlich um? Ähm, welche Haltung entwickle ich dagegen und wo muss ich sagen, stopp, so nicht? Und ich glaube, die Reaktion von Anna Ma, die eben hier auch das erste Mal so die Musik und alles, was dazugehörte, miterleben durfte, das war für uns dann eben auch nochmal ein besonderes Erlebnis. 
es war eine schöne Bestätigung zu sehen, dass anscheinend das, was wir dort gemacht haben, auch für die, die es gesehen haben, wichtig war und dass es die berührt hat. Das zu sehen, dass es tatsächlich so, so wirkt, wie wir es uns irgendwie erhofft haben, das war für mich schön. Und da zeigte sich dann, dass so die Idee, die dahinter steckt, den Menschen tatsächlich etwas, etwas mitzugeben, dass das anscheinend funktioniert hat. Letztendlich war, glaube ich, die Thematik für die Schülerinnen faszinierend, ein Dokument vorzufinden, welches so unglaublich authentisch ist. In dem Moment, wo ich die Musik aufführe, wird das für mich ganz gegenwärtig. Also das, was vor 70 Jahren stattgefunden hat, wird jetzt auf einmal erklingt und dadurch wird es dann real. Das Grundthema der Verantwortung äh, auch für uns als äh, Deutsche wirklich auch weiterdenken kann und dass man das in den europäischen Gedanken in die Jetztzeit übertragen kann, ohne ständig mit irgendwelchen moralischen Zeigefingern zu hantieren und äh, belehrend zu wirken, sondern dass man das wirklich ähm, handlungs- und äh, ergebnisorientiert ähm, mit Schülerinnen auf die Beine stellen kann. The legacy of Gunnar Teldas and his comrades lives on. In the 75th year of the liberation from Hitler Germany, the Fangesungar serve as a memorial for a new generation. They help to remind us that freedom and mutual understanding are vulnerable values that need to be cherished and protected. Thank you. 